Thank you all for joining us today. Um, delighted to welcome everyone to our second Creators for Our Future Masterclass. Um, many of you, of course, being the cohort, are aware that this is a partnership with the United Nations Office for Partnerships. And it's really to uh, promote all your creative creativity, your great talent, and really seeing the groundbreaking innovation that you're putting in this world. And of course, we are joined by sustainability activist and journalist Fernanda Simon. And I just have to say thank you so much for joining us today. Your wealth of experience and knowledge is something that we can all learn from. And so it's an absolute privilege to welcome you here today. And so I'm going to hand it over to you actually. Um, I'll go off camera now, but thank you for joining us. Hello everyone, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. I hope you all are well. And well, should I start? Yes? Yep. So I'm Fernanda Simon. I've been working with fashion and sustainability since 2010. Uh, I am the executive director of Fashion Revolution Brazil. I'm also the founder of Fashion Revolution in Brazil. I don't know if you all know what is Fashion Revolution, but it's a global movement, an activist movement for a better fashion industry. So we work to make fashion good for everyone. So in Brazil, we are since 2014, and we have a huge team of collaborators, students, we do many projects, events, so many, nice things happening here in fashion and sustainability. It is my invite for you all to know, to meet our work here in Brazil and also all over the world. And alongside, I also contributed to Vogue Brazil as a sustainability ed editor. So nice to meet you all. I also apologize for my English. I feel a bit nervous about speaking English for many people. And well, I, I am in Brazil. So, you know, many years without speaking English every day. So I don't know, maybe I can do some mistakes. So I apologize. And well, here is my contact. If you want to something from me, it will be a pleasure to help you. And well, before talking about fashion, I wanted to talk about the climate emergence that we are live in. So it is a reality. Climate crisis is happening right now as we are here speaking. Many things are happening at this moment all over the world. And during the last days, we had the last report from IPCC. So according according to this last report, which was described as a code red for humanity. We have less than 10 years to cut at half our green gas emission. And in this report, proof that human activity has contributed to climate change with irreversible side effects. So we must change how we are living in this planet. Uh, well, I, here I have a, a quote from Vandana Shiva, who is my master, my mentor, who is the person who I most admire. And she say that we live in a system that promises a better life for all, but it kills life itself. So here I have a, a, another slide that we said, that we live in a savage capitalism and patriarch patriarchal system that induces accelerate production consumption model that is totally disconnected from the earth capacity. And this system, it hurts people, especially women, breaks local culture and traditional communities. It strains other guidelines like racism, species, machism, and the result is violence, is poverty, 
is misery, is crisis. So this is where we are living now. So we do, we do need to look to this and see what we can do for changing. And fashion is a part of the problem. So according to the World Bank, the fashion industry, oops, sorry, the fashion industry accounts for 10% of all the global carbon emissions. It is gallons and gallons of fresh water used in the dyeing process of textile each year. So this is like, a, this represents 20% of global industrial water pollution. So it is a very high number as well. We have the thing, like we have the social and cultural issues, like the problem with the work, how people are working, how people are doing our clothes. In Fashion Revolution, we, we talk a lot about this. Now we say to people, ask who made my clothes, for we try to understand who are the people behind our clothes, what's happening behind our clothes. So the fashion industry is large, is huge, and we do must look at this industry as uh, something that can create a positive transformation, can create a better life for people who make our clothes, who wear the clothes. So, but we can't ignore that the fashion at the moment is the part of the problem, is a part of the problem. And well, I also wanted to talk about a little bit about Brazil, a little bit about Amazon, because this is something very urgent that's happening in here, but we all must know because Amazon is something very precious and the world should try to protect it, but this is not happening. It's the opposite of what's happening now. And the Amazon is the world's, the world's largest rainforest. And during the last year, the forestation was the fo the forestation oh sorry let me just close here uh, sorry during the last year the forestation was at the highest level in the last 12 years so this year the devastated area is already 70% larger than the average recorded between 2009 and 2018 and also there's the fire now the amazon is on fire again pantanal is on fire again and one of the main reasons of this deforestation is the cattle industry. So the forest is being cut on behalf of the cattle industry. The livestock industry is responsible for a high greenhouse gas emission. And we are losing all the local biodiversity, the local animals, the medicinal, the medicinal plants, the ancestral trees local cultures and much much more all this richness that is in amazon we are just cutting to transform amazon in a meat factory and this meat goes to other countries goes to the countries of the north north the global north and so it's something that is very close to us some people think that amazon is burning and it's being deforested is something uh, far from us, but no, it is very close to all of us. And, and actually, some people doesn't know that this region is drying and is, it actually can become a desert, you know, because the soil is, if it, you cut the trees, the soil gets dry and dry, it can become a desert. So it's something very urgent that we need to look at. At. And also, we, if we think about fashion, we have the leather issue, as leather is made from cattle skin, and many of the leather used in global, globally, it comes from Amazon. So when you see some leather, try to look and ask where this leather comes from, how it was produced, and because Yes, it is also part of this big problem we are facing as humanity. 
Uh, well, apart from Amazon, we have other areas in Brazil like Pantanal and Cerrado, which are being drastically affected by the government and population neglect. So we have like fires happening in Pantanal at this moment as well. Uh, last year, just the last year, it was one third of the vegetation of Pantanal, it was destroyed by this fire. So there we are also losing many animal species and vegetation. Uh, well, so as I said, fashion and Amazon is really connected. We also have the mining issue because have you ever asked where the gold come from? So many gold comes from Amazon. We don't have laws to protect the lands. We don't have laws to protect the people who live in the forest. We have many local indigenous community, such as the Yanomamis. They are facing destruction of their lands, of their rivers by illegal gold mining. I hear have even a quote from da Davi Kopenawa. He is the Yanomami leader and he's also a shaman. And he's quite concerned and disgusted by the current gold mining invasion. And he says, you see the dirt water, you see the yellow river, everything is polluted. They are coming into, they are coming in like hungry animals looking for the wealth of our lands. It is advancing very, very fast. The mining is already arriving at my house. So it is a quite, quite, sorry. So this is a really sad situation. And this is happening right now. As I said before, the government doesn't care about that. So it's also important us as a consumer, as a citizen, as a company, leader as a fashion lover to look for solutions to be responsible and to find ways to have good partnerships and to take care of the earth and all its richness another thing uh, very important to say Sorry, guys, I have, there is a microphone open. I'm just listening to someone else. Maybe sometimes some, I don't know if someone wants to say something. Okay. Uh, well, the cotton thing, the, the cotton issue that also related to the forest devastation in Brazil, the fiber production of cotton is huge in Brazil. Brazil is one of the five largest cotton producers in the world. And cotton, it seems like a, a natural good fiber, but it's not. The cotton is grown on a monoculture system full of chemicals, pesticides, in a region that have been deforestated on behalf of the agribusiness. Uh, we know that the monoculture itself degradates the soil and has a significant negative impact. So we must think also how we are producing our fibers, how we are producing what is behind our clothes. And the cotton thing is something that I always like to bring because it's something very urgent as well. Uh, mainly here in Brazil, we don't have, again, we don't have laws that protect the areas, that protect the soil. So we have many, many chemicals, many poison chemicals, and that is not good for the people, it's not good for the, for the water, for the soil. So this has been a very important fight for those who are looking to fashion as a positive uh, force. So, so uh, and also to finish the 
Amazon and nature problems, we also have the reality of indigenous here in Brazil. Um, all the indigenous traditional communities, local people are suffering from the negative impacts of the COVID pandemic at the moment, the economic crisis, uh, fires, and the climate change, because we know that the climate change is already giving some impacts all over the world. So I, here I have uh, some quotes. Uh, the Montes is not Brazilian, but what she said is what's happening in Brazil as well. So she said that this is my message to the Western world. Your civilization is killing life on Earth. And, and so I have to say, I have to say to all of you, the Earth doesn't expect you to save her. She expects you to respect her. And we, as indigenous people, ex expect the same. So we must look into this culture, to look to these people and have another kind of relationship. You forced your civilization open us and now look where we are. Global pandemic, climate crisis, extinctions and driving it all. So, and also they spread by the spiritual poverty. So look at this situation. So we must act now. So sustainable development uh, at the moment is not even enough any longer. We must regenerate the system. We must look into process that are giving us a positive impact, not just being sustainable. We need to do more so this is the message I wanted to bring to you all, that we need to find ways of creating this positive impact and regenerate the system. Uh, life is nature. We are all nature. If we wanted to survive and thrive, we must reconnect it with nature. Nature has all the tools, all the secrets, everything we need for a deep transformation. And sometimes we are talking about sustainability and we say, we say, we saw people saying that, oh, we must save the planet. Oh, the planet uh, must be saved. But actually it's not the planet that must be saved. We need to save ourselves because at the moment, maybe as we see many species uh, no longer existing, because of the climate change, maybe we humans, we can no longer exist in the future. So when we are talking about uh, sustainability and regenerate systems, we are talking about uh, preserve our lives as a human beings, because all the other animals live in peace with earth, but we don't. So if we don't learn how to live in harmony, we will not survive. So this is something real that's happening right now. And this is the moment to act. And well, talking a bit about regenerative system, I have here the agroforest. It is a tool. Uh, I have here a quote from Ana Primavesi, who was an agronomist, a researcher, and educator of soil science here in, from Brazil. She just passed away last year, but she she led all many books and researches. And well, and she said the secret of life is the soil because plants, water, climate, and our life depends on the soil. Everything is interconnected. There is no healthy human being if the soil is not healthy. So this is something that is simple, but when we think about the soil, we think about how we eat, how we air, wear our clothes, how we dispose 
because everything comes from the soil and everything somehow goes back to the soil. So it is important that we assume responsibility for the soil. So this is something that comes, you know, behind. Uh, and the picture is Ernest Gutsch. He has a different name. He's a Swiss farmer, but he lives in Brazil many, many years. And he has created a system of uh, sustainable farming techniques that supports biodiversity and the climate. Uh, it is known as a syntropic agriculture. It has been very popular in Brazil. Thanks God, uh, this syntropic agriculture is being becoming a bit more popular and is a very interesting system. And he teaches how to imitate nature to create regenerative system. So it is a rich system. He plants all together. He has how to plant things together, how to create a diverse space. And so it's quite interesting. And it is a brilliant tool if you will want to talk and create regenerative systems. Um, so the first law of ecology is that everything is related to everything else. So just to bring again, you know, this feeling of connection, this feeling of diversity. When we study ecology, when we study agroforestry, we see how in nature everything is so collaborated, you know, how, how everything works in collaboration. So how everything, everyone has a function, everyone has a value. So this is so clear in nature, why this is so difficult for us as human. We are always thinking that someone or something is not important, you know, or, you know, we, we are not celebrating this diversity as it is in nature. And well, here is like a, a proof that it's possible to do a regenerative fashion and clothes. This is a agroecological cotton. So this is a organic agroecological cotton. It is natural colored. So it was not dyed. This is its natural color. It was produced ethically in a local family, in a community in Brazil, all fair prices, all fair business. So the name is Justa Trama for those who wanted to know more. So it is just a proof that it's possible to make regenerative clothes, regenerative fashion and bring a positive impact. Because when we are creating this kind of system, we are creating a system that's good for the soil. It's not that system that is like bringing poverty to the soil. No, it's bringing nutrients for the soil. It's bringing uh, prosperity for the families who are working. So the clothes in the end, it can be disposable, you know, it's totally biodegrad biodegradable. So it is uh, just a proof that we can do a fashion as a force for good. Uh, here as well, for us to consider and uh, the fibers and materials from the forest. So uh, I want to encourage all of us to think about these materials that come from the forest, from local communities, traditional communities. Uh, but at the same point, remember to be mindful if they were produced produced ethically. Many times in Brazil, traveling around, visiting these local communities, I could observe how rich are their culture, but most of them live in the poverty. Sometimes people go there, some designers, some brands, they wanted to do a partnership, but this partnership is not really good for the people of the community. 
So how can we create and support real good connections that enable us to distribute the gain more fairly? So it's important that the prosperity goes to these people as well. And so because they can, you know, if they have prosperity, they can live where they are and they can do their work and instead of going to the city, instead of going to other places and just abandon all this culture, all these materials, all this knowledge. And well, circular economy is something also that is very important for us to study, to consider. Uh, I have here a quote from Michael Brongard, one of the creators of the Cradle to Cradle, which is like a school of a, a circular economy. And he says that we see a world of abundance, not limits, in the mind, in the midst of the great deal of talking about reducing the human ecological footprint, we offer a different vision. What if human design products and system that celebrate an abundance of human creativity, culture, and produ productivi productivity? What are so intelligent and safe our species leaves ecological footprint to delight in, not lament? So they have this vision of creating prosperity, of living in abundance. This is very beautiful because sometimes in sustainability, we see people saying, oh, we must create less impact negative we must pollute less and so it's about doing less harm and what about if we do good this is the idea of what michael brongard says with in this theory of cradle to cradle and well and in general circular economy means a model that is designed to minimize resource input as well as waste and emission production, aiming to reach the maximum efficiency in the use of finite resources, but at the same time, uh, produce doing this positive impact. Uh, and so essentially, a circular economy describes a regenerative economic system. So to talk about regenerative system is also talking about circular economy. And here I have this, this, this figure that you can maybe understand that we live now at the moment, we live in an economy that is linear. So everything is produced to go to the bin, to become waste. And in the circular economy, things are produced to become resources. So we are always in this place of uh, waste is not waste, but is a resource as it is in nature. When you see the forest, a tree that is full of fruits and leaves, when this fruit goes to the floor, goes to the earth, they become nutrients. It is all uh, circular. There's no waste in nature, everything is resource. So is like this that circular economy works. I also here wanted to talk about ecofeminism because there is no climate justice without gender justice. So if we want make peace with earth we must make peace with woman. And ecofeminism, for those who doesn't know, it's a philosophical, political, and academic movement that studies the intersection of feminism and environment. 
So this parallel between the systemic oppression of women and the degradation of nature, both of which result from a male dominant society. So we see this patriarchal system that is quite violent to women, is quite violent to the earth. So the feminism and the ecofeminism make us to think about this balance to justice. So, uh, and also the, well, that's it. So every time, you know, I have this opportunity to talk about climate justice, I wanted to remind all of us how it's important to talk also about the gender justice. And here as well, once again, how important is we look to the heritage and ancestrality and the learning with the indigenous and traditional culture. Here I have a picture of a woman from an indigenous community in Brazil. They are the Huni Queens. I'm actually wearing some clothes from them. So it was made in the middle of the forest by hands, as you can see in the picture. So how is, it, how is it important we learn from them and also support what they do? Uh, and here I have a quote from a very important indigenous activist from Brazil, who is Ailton Krenak. And he says that we are alienating ourselves from this organism of we are part of, we are part, the earth. We started to think that it is one thing and we are another, earth and humanity. I don't understand where there is anything that is not nature. Everything is nature. The cosmos is nature. All I can think is about nature. So once again, he brings this word of connection to the nature, the air we breathe, the water that is in our cities, you know, and how it's important for us to try to find this connection, even when we are living in a big city. So, yeah. Here, I also have a quote from Rachel Carson, who is also a pioneer of the ecological movement, uh, about the organic movement. And she was studying all these effects of the pesticides and all the chemicals in the soil, in our food. And well, and she said that the more clearly we can focus our attention on the wonders and realities of the universe, the less taste we shall have for destruction. So how important is that we connect ourselves, our work, our vision, our mind to the positive movement of transformation because we have so many bad things happening. So how can we learn the good things, how can we prosper with Earth, how we can we connect it to this movement. So I wanted to bring the, her message. And well, I just have two more things to share with you. One of them is the biomimetic, bio biomimetic uh, as a tool of learning with nature, a, a tool for designers, mainly for designers, uh, biomimetic is the emulation of the models, systems, and elements of nature for the purpose of solving complex human problems. We have here some image, but we can learn a lot of how nature works and bring the stitches for fashion. So this is, this is also a tool for us as a designer, as a citizen to study and learn. So I wanted to bring this for you as well. And the last two I wanted to share 
e the shamanism i know that shamanism is also a spiritual practice and also have you know uh, some spiritual and traditional cultures is not something simple or general to be talked about it but uh it's also important for us to know that this exists to be curious about it um in the, i have a, a person who is a mainly a, he's nearly a shaman as someone who is a pioneer of the shamanism studies in brazil and he his name is levertazi and some and he says that in the past those who couldn't not connected with life cycles would not survive because if you if you don't know how when is the right time to plant when is the right time to harvest to uh whatever to produce your food and everything if you were not connected to the seasons you know you wouldn't survive So we lost this connection. Nowadays we just buy our food in the supermarket. So the shamanism is also this connection with the nature cycles. So we have infinite things to learn. And so nowadays we it's we talk a lot about the new shamanism or the universal shamanism and they offer us access to some of this knowledge and some possibilities of connecting to this wisdom uh, and the path is inspired by the ancient wisdom the study of the talents of animals plants songs dances ceremonies so i also believe that shamanism and all this nature wisdom is an important tool for our transformation and the transformation of our system and well this is the last one it's just some phrases to inspire uh, like uh, the one again from michael brongard from cradle to cradle that he says that my reasoning is different from traditional environmentalist because i see humans as a opportunity for the planet and not as a burden but as a opportunity and another one from a farmer from brazil and he says that when a man in pover impoverishes the earth he is impoverishing himself too so when we do something bad for the earth we are doing something bad for ourselves this is so simple and the last one from namaste who is someone who work with agroforest in brazil and he says that in nature the nature always work so that there is abundance on the planet the nature works toward life it works towards prosperity so this is the natural way of living in nature the prosperity not our system of poverty so that is well just to finish protect and survive the beautiful katherine hamnet and so that that's it i hope you all have have had a good time here with me once again sorry about my english mistake uh here's my contact and we are together to create this transformation and thank you so much that's it i don't know if you have some questions and i think prior to going to questions may i just say absolutely amazing um really helpful insight and honestly your english is perfect i have to say so you did a great presentation so thank you so much um just opening then up to our wonderful cohorts for your questions hi fernanda uh, my name is camila and um first of all i'm very connected with what you're doing um i live in ecuador 
and I'm trying to do the same here. Um, I went to school, so I know all the, I studied cradle to cradle and the whole fashion revolution. Um, and uh, right now <laughs> I'm trying to work with that here. And I am trying a lot to work with my communities here, but the main problem I have is that a lot of people here, especially local designers, don't value artists and work as much as they should. And they always try to like cut prices and don't like pay them uh, fairly. And it's like a custom culture that we cannot like really, really change. So I'm trying to find a way where I can value the craftsmanship of the artisans and at the same time um, have a fair pr price for them that is also very competitive. One of the main problems that I have is um, keeping a sustainable piece or garment affordable for people. So I was wondering if you have any uh, thoughts on that or any suggestions. Thank you so much, Camila. It's a pleasure to meet you. We are together. Let's go do this revolution. <laughs> and yes, well, actually, this is a global problem. This is happening all over the world. Uh, and we. this is why it's so important we talk about what is fair, who is doing our clothes. This is why fashion revolution uh, encourage people to ask who made my clothes and what I have to say, do it, you know, keep doing uh, step by step. The transformation we need is huge, but we need to do what, you know, like what we can do sometimes it seems so little, but we must do it. Uh, it's sometimes we need to convince people, you know, to explain people one by one this price is fair we must pay this price we must open the prices this is why also it's so important we talk about transparency you know and uh, show what is behind the product products what is behind all the idea you are showing so this is the future as well to talk about what is behind and doing this uh, trans transparent process so but it's not easy i know and what i have to say is do it because you know you start doing like a little uh transformation in this community and creating this product that sometimes it can be you know not very affordable in the beginning but with the time you'll be able to do a more fair price you do you know in, with time things will get in other shape and the important is you to keep the the idea you know keep the the fair idea in your mind do it the right thing and don't give up Hello. Are there any other questions? Go for it, Ben. So uh, I actually had a question about the bio, uh, I think it was bio mim mimic. It was towards the end, what you were talking about bringing nature into design. And uh, could you just speak a little bit more on that? I found that really interesting. I know it's not as much about the sustainability aspect, but uh, as like a designer, I'm a footwear designer, and so it was just very interesting to me. Sorry, what's your name? Ah, Ben, sorry. Oh, I just saw okay. it. Sorry, ben. yeah. Nice to meet you, Ben. Well, biomimetic is really, is really, really fantastic. Uh, I'm not a specialist in this, you know, I'm not, I mean, like, an, I don't consider myself a designer as well. I'm much more a, a researcher but uh, biomimetic is a tool there is a book it is in english actually so if you just google it you will find this book and it has all the explanation about it and but uh the general idea 
is just to see how nature works, how nature is designed, and how we can inspire, you know, take these inspirations to solve our problems. So, uh, example, the velvet, the velvet, no, it's not velvet. I'm ah, sorry, I don't know the name in English. That thing that we, well, sorry, I will not, I, I can't give this example, sorry. But uh, many things, like uh, even the flight, you know, uh, airplane, it, it, it was inspired in a bird. So many things that we construct, it is inspired in nature. So this is the general idea. You know, we use the nature uh, as an inspiration, but how it is designed, how it works, how the cycles, how things grow, how things die, how is the life itself. So, yeah, I, yes. So do you think that that could be taken in not only to design, but into the actual manufacturing of like products and how like uh, fibers are grown and how fibers are dyed and all of that? Totally. Yes, totally, totally. One, the system that I showed to you, the agroforest system, is inspired exactly in the in the the nature how nature works between them you know how a plant works with the other plant how the root works with the other root so all this system can be studied and can be transformed in our products in our how we produce things how we think things how we create things thank you I super recommend this book. Uh, I even have here, uh, but, well, but if you have a Google bio, my metric, you will see this book and I really recommend it. If you are a designer, you will see how fantastic is this universe. I will, I will definitely check it out. Thank you. I have another question. You talked about um, the circularity, uh, the circular economy, and just like closing the loop in, in, in the clothing industry. I was wondering, most of the process I'm working on right now have to do with the manufacturing and I'm controlling all the traceability of that. But how can I do the part of disposal better? Like what are some recommendations in the clothing industry of disposing the clothing or recycling? I am trying to figure out like the whole system and just closing it back to manufacturing again. Yes, yeah, very good, good question, Camila. Uh, in fact, it is a problem because most of the garments we already have produced in our world, they are not, you know, biodegradable, they are not recyclable. So we must to find uh, solutions for what to do with this garment who that the, uh, this garment that already exists. So uh, this is why it's important. We also talking talking about upcycling. You know, this is why it's important. The designer have this creativity, this creative look so, to this garment. And we find other kinds of solution, and also the second-hand shops, uh, you know, swap shops who and uh, use this clothes as well instead of just dispose this clothes. So yeah, but it is a thing that we must think and create solutions for the garments that already exist, uh, and also to create recycling process more efficient that we don't have many. Here in Brazil for clothing, we have just a little, little tiny bit. You know, even for general material, we just recycle 3% of all the material we produce. So this is ridiculous. So we do need, we must have better um, system, recycling system. But when we talk about a uh, circular economy is that uh, at the moment, we must look into this too. We must create 
products that were thinking, were created thinking about the uh, circular economy. So, uh, and in the future, we will just be able to create products that are circular because it's not possible for us to live in this system anymore. But yes, so I see as two things happening at the same time, you know, creating solution for the garment we already have produced it, but thinking about circular economy at this moment in the future. Um, hi, I'm Sejil. I have a question. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for bringing up biomimetics. I'm an engineering student and I love using biomimetics in most of my designs. So thank you so much for talking about that. And uh, I had a doubt. So I'm working with like corn fibers and bamboo fibers to design reusable menstrual uh, pads or like sanitary napkins and kind of give back to the community. So you spoke a lot about interacting with the indigenous community. Um, I'd love to know how does one go about it? Like, because this is a topic, um, menstruation, which is kind of a hush-hush in some cultures uh, where you can't really discuss it openly or talk about it. But if you want to give back to the community through those kind of sustainable products, what would be the best approach? Great question, Cesar. Nice to meet you too. And well, I think something very important is to listen to them. Because sometimes, you know, I see here uh, in many projects I've been working with, sometimes we think that we know more, we think we go to the community and we will say what they have to do, how they have to do, and we will have the solution. You know, uh, this is not the way. We need to be humble to arrive in this community, listen to them, to understand what are the real issues, what are the real necessities, and how can we work together in collaboration, not, you know, not put them to work for us, but work with them. And uh, so I think the most important thing is how we have this relationship with this community. I think this is the key. So it will be different from all this colonizing process that we know what happened in the world. Uh, so we just have this kind look and kind approach and be open to learn and be open to listen I think this is the most thing that must be considered before we go to them. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. So I think that's it, Daka. You want to say something else? Well, if there are no other questions, um, maybe it's to say that thank you again for sharing. And I, I've written some notes as well myself. And for me, what you really shared is the importance that you all have when you're looking at um, your brand. Who do you partner with? Making sure you have responsible relationships, li really listening to communities but also looking at your value chain from production, manufacturing to the end and this circular aspect. And you really um, demonstrated all those great ideas. So I just want to say thank you so much. I learned a lot as well listening in. So it was a real privilege for me, but also hearing all the great questions too from the cohort. Um, I love learning. And again, Fernand Simon, thank you so much for your time. And thank you cohorts as well for your time too. And I look forward to the next masterclass. Thank you so much. So I leave my contact. We'll, it was a pleasure. And we are together in this transformation, this revolution. And have you all a nice day. And that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you soon. Speak soon. Bye. <laughs>